Hello, my name is Sanyo Hwang, Korean Program Associate at the Freer Gallery of Art and Arthur M. Sackler Gallery, which together form the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. We are grateful to the Korean Cultural Center here in Washington, D.C. for their encouragement to create this video, which celebrates our museum's commitment to exhibiting Korean art and culture. This project exemplifies the Freer and Sackler Gallery's broader dedication to increase our understanding of the arts and cultures of Asia through a broad portfolio of exhibitions, publications, conservation studies, art historical research, education, and events. At the Freer and Sackler, we have the great honor of being the Smithsonian's first museum dedicated to the arts. The Freer Gallery of Art, founded by the visionary industrialist and collector Charles Eng Freer, opened to the public in 1923 on the National Mall right next to the Smithsonian Castle. Together with the Arthur M. Sackler Gallery added in 1987, the Freer and Sackler have grown to become not just complementary galleries, but a national resource for Asian art and culture in the United States. When the Freer opened its doors in 1923, the gallery's assembly of Korean art was unparalleled in quality and historical scope. The simple forms, spare decoration, and monochrome glazes of Joseon period tea bowls first attracted Charles and Freer to Korean ceramics. He later expanded his collection to include Goryeo Dynasty Saladon and rare examples of exquisite Buddhist paintings. Today, our Korean collection includes almost 300 Korean ceramics spanning the Three Kingdoms, Unified Shilla, Goryeo, and Joseon periods. The notable strength of the collection are slowdown wares of the Goryeo period and tea bowls made for the Japanese market in the Joseon period. The current show in the gallery, entitled Rediscovering Korea's Past, was designed by Louise Court, Curator Emeritus. It focuses on green glazed ware of the Goryeo period, collected by Charles St. Greer. The large and diverse family of green glazes, known collectively as Sladon, was first invented in China. The knowledge of making Sladon spread to Korea by the 10th century. A thin, even coating of translucent glaze over a light gray stoneware body produces the distinctively gray-green shade of much Goryeo Sladon. Kiln complexes in Puan and Gangjin in southwestern Korea made the best Sladon ware and shipped it north to elite consumers in the capital in Kaesong. In the 12th century, the finest products were admired even in China. However, it is surprising to realize that the great achievements of Goryeo Sladon were once largely forgotten as tastes changed in Korea 600 years ago. While green was the representative color of Korean ceramics during the Goryeo period, white became the preferred color under the Joseon dynasty. White porcelain replaced Saladon in temples, palaces, and homes of the elite and became the most popular and widely produced ceramic type. The revived interest in Goryeo Saladon occurred in the late 19th century when long-respected tombs of royal figures and nobility from the Goryeo period became vulnerable to looting. Saladon and other cherished possessions of the deceased, preserved as burial offerings, were plundered and sold in the antiquities market. American doctor, missionary, diplomat, and collector, Horace Newton Allen witnessed this rediscovery while he lived in Seoul from 1884 to 1905. At the time, he formed his own sizable collection of Sladan isims from objects on the open market. There is also an intriguing story on how Ellen became interested in collecting Goryeo ceramics. 
Soon after he arrived in Seoul in 1884, he saved the life of a relative of the queen. The king thanked the doctor with a gift of a little gray-green bowl carefully wrapped up and encased in a lacquer box. Ellen was bewildered by the gift at first, but his ignorance of the bowl's age and value inspired him to study and collect Korean ceramics. He later boasted to have secured a collection that was pronounced by connoisseurs to be the best they had ever seen. What you see here are some of Goria ceramics from Ellen's collection, which Freer purchased in 1907, two years after Ellen returned to the United States from living in Korea. A total of 80 pieces made up the collection, and the purchase fundamentally changed the course of Freer's collecting of Korean ceramics as he shifted his interest from Joseon tea bowls to Goria Sladon. Freer's acquisition included early examples of Korean Sladon, such as this 11th century ewer with its plain rounded shape, which reflects the shapes and decorative techniques of Chinese yueware Sladon. Chinese yueware was highly esteemed in Korea since the preceding unified Silla dynasty. Scholars believe that Chinese potters from yueware kilns fleeing disruptions in the Yue region may have brought the technology to kilns in Korea. Another interesting piece from the acquisition is a rare example of Goryeo whiteware that was made in small quantities compared to Sladon's. Horace Allen purchased this box in Seoul in 1890 and noted that its purpose was to hold the ink pad used with the seal. This group of ceramics are objects that are misidentified as Korean at the time of purchase. Collectors and dealers in the early 20th century assumed that all ceramics found in Goryeo tombs were Korean. Horace Allen identified these four white or pale blue glazed pieces as Goryeo whiteware. He considered the vase, supposedly from a royal tomb, to be the star of his collection. However, details such as the vertically fluted body and foliate base are characteristics of pieces from the Chinese Song Dynasty, and the vase is now attributed to 11th century China. In fact, later research has verified all of these pieces as Chinese, not Korean. Freer brought other ceramics he was told had been excavated in Korea, but that we now know to be Chinese. These examples discovered in Korea are important because they confirm the long-standing trade relationship between these two regions. Inspired by his purchase of the Ellen collection, Freer continued to acquire Goryeo Sladons in earnest. He bought Korean ceramics not only in New York, but also in London and Kyoto. In 1915, he purchased a rare ewer with red painted decoration applied under the glaze. The color is derived from the mineral copper. Freer bought this extraordinary example from the Japanese collector and government official named Kuroda Takuma. This ewer is inspired by the shape of a lotus bud its type blossom emphasized by deep copper red pigment which outlines each floral petal. Little dots of white liquid clay are also applied to the petals as naturalistic accents. Goryeo potters bravely experimented with copper red pigment beneath Sladon glaze, but obtaining the desired color was notoriously difficult. If misfired, the pigment would turn dull gray. Not surprisingly, only two other ewers like this one are known in the world. One was excavated from the tomb of a court official who died in 1257 and is now a national treasure of Korea. Certainly, a team of highly skilled potters must have made all three ewers. As with the other two surviving examples, a scene of small boys holding lotus buds in a pond 
is portrayed around the shoulder of the vessel. A tiny frog on the handle held a cord connecting the lid that is now missing. Today, we are able to enjoy this beautiful piece in the gallery thanks to the keen eye of Freer as a collector. Charles and Freer closely worked with Yamanaka and Company, a prominent Japanese art dealer with a gallery in New York City, to expand his early Korean holdings. To diversify his collection, he purchased ceramic types not represented in Ellen's collections. One example is this water dropper, which takes the form of a duck, trailing water plants from its beak. The hollow vessel was used to prepare ink for writing or painting. Water would have been added through the opening in the back and poured through the open beak into an inkstone where it would have been mixed with ink powder ground from a dried stick of ink. Another example is the combined tea bowl and stand in dark glaze. Korean potters achieved the dark glaze through a distinctive method, first coating the vessel with a runny solution of dark iron-rich clay called a slip, then covering the application with translucent silicon glaze. As you can see, the result is a deep-toned glaze that appears to shimmer with an iridescent sheen. Besides Goya ceramics, Freer also collected objects in other materials, including bronze vessels recovered from Goya period burials. The color of this bronze bottle, reminiscent of Sladan, is a result of years of corrosion, acquiring a greenish coating called patina. A related strength in the collection, which is now currently on display, are two Buddhist paintings also created during the Goryeo period. In 1904, art dealer Siegfried Bing purchased this painting featuring a single Buddhist deity for Freer in Paris. Two years later, Freer purchased another work depicting the central seated Buddha Amitabha surrounded by eight attendant deities from Yamanaka and company. Both of these paintings were known as Chinese at the time of purchase, but the later research verified they are Korean works of art painted during the 14th century. The visual characteristics of Goryeo Buddhist paintings include saturated mineral pigments, extensive use of gold, and detailed designs representing woven textile patterns. Today, only about 160 of these exceptional paintings exist worldwide, and these works are two of 16 Goryeo Buddhist paintings in museums of the United States. The diverse and varied collection we have viewed together in this gallery reflects Freer's deep interest in Korean art and culture. Thanks to him, the strength of the Korean collection in the Freer Gallery of Art lies in Goryeo Sladan where, as more than half the ceramics in the collection date to this period. If you have enjoyed the works from the gallery and would like to learn more, I invite you to check out Korean Ceramics in the Freer Gallery of Art and Goryeo Buddhist Paintings, a closer look online catalogs on our museum's website. Thank you for watching, and we also hope that you will visit us to see the gallery in person when the museum reopens.